than that. The last thing we want to see in a hygiene recall patient when we go into the operatory to do that hygiene check is a composite that's worn out like butter or a composite where the margins are not adapted very well to the uh, tooth structure or a composite that has just broken because it's not strong enough to maintain some of the occlusal forces. So these are the types of images that we don't want to see when our patients come back within our practices. So let's take a look at some routine dentistry that we do every day within our practice using this new material called Wagofil. And Wagofil is a microhybrid type of composite that is infused not only with silica, but also with zirconia particles. And what these zirconia particles allow you to get is more strength. So this is a composite that's mainly geared towards the posterior portion uh, of the mouth uh, because of the high strength uh, that it has. So when we take a look at this restorations, what do we see? Well, we see that there's some force on these amalgam restorations. They've been polished because of the occlusal forces. Uh, we definitely see some margins that are starting to open up and possibly get recurrent decay. So we want to explore around these restorations. And then most importantly, they're unesthetic. A lot of patients present to my practice and say, look, I don't like the amalgam restorations. I don't want the mercury in my body. I want these restorations removed. The first thing I'll always do is use my intraoral camera to take a photo and put it on the screen so the patients can see what we see. And the first thing I'll notice is some of the margins that may be open or where I may get a stick underneath these margins. And so it's imperative that we explain to our patients that this margin or the seal is no longer intact. And if food and debris can get in there or even the bacteria that's within our saliva, the uh, mouth is a warm, moist, dark place. And that's what bacteria loves. So decay can definitely grow underneath these restorations. Well, this Demodent uh, model, which is a patient education model, is something that I created several years ago. And it allows you to explain to your patient what is going on. So if you look at the middle portion of the demo dent, you can see where the failing amalgam restoration is. So I'll educate the patient and say, you saw the areas of where we had uh, the seam was no longer intact. These areas, if we look at the cross-sectional area, may be leaking. And if this leakage continues, then there may be decay that may be underneath these restorations. That may explain the sensitivity that you we're experiencing. So what we would recommend is removing these restorations, cleaning out any type of decay that may be underneath there, and then finally replacing it with a composite restoration. The Demo Dent Patient H Education Model that is available through Golden Dent also allows you to illustrate to the patient occlusal and interproximal decay. It allows you to illustrate tartar buildup or recession. It also allows you to show the failing amalgam restoration, not only from the standpoint of the margin breaking down, but on the reverse side where there may be a fracture and a necessity for core and crown restoration. So this is something that helps us illustrate to the patient what's going on. So we removed the amalgam, we've removed any decay that was leaking under there, we extend the margin slightly, and now we're ready to place the composite. So we'll go ahead and etch the tooth. I still like using a fifth generation bonding agent where we're etching and uh, bonding. Um, however, sixth and seventh generation bonding agents work very well. The Wago Fill composite material can be used with any type of bonding agent, which is nice. And the different types of techniques of filling uh, these cavities um, are such. The oblique or incremental filling method was to go ahead and place flowable at the base of the preparation and then incrementally build up the composite to avoid any type of shrinkage that may contract these cuffs and cause sensitivity. 
So if you look, you'll see the first layer in gray would designate the flowable composite, and then we could incrementally build this up by going in an oblique manner so that we wouldn't have shrinkage from one side of the cusp to the other. The traditional filling material or filling style with the new filling materials that are available like the micro hybrids and the nano uh, particle type of composites is what we call a traditional filling. And that's essentially using some type of flowable composite as designated in the gray with the one or even some people are using like a resin modified glass ionomer as a base, and then taking a composite that has photo initiators um, where you can cure up to a four millimeter depth cure and um, fill it in a two-stage method. This is also designated as a shaded technique where essentially you're just looking at the shade of the enamel using one shade and uh, placing the flowable and then following it with the composite of choice, usually it being a microhybrid or a nano-filled particle. The monoblock uh, flow technique is something uh, that Densply initiated with their material called the SDS SureFill Flow. This is a flowable composite that's filled that can be bulk filled However, you cannot have that portion just exposed to the occlusion because it will break down. Uh, the manufacturer, uh, from what I understand and I've experienced myself uh, in the past, is to use this SDR SureFill Flow, do a bulk fill, and then the last millimeter and a half to two millimeters use a regular type of composite. Uh, this helps prevent a sensitivity. Um, and it allows you to be a little bit more efficient. Then we also have the bulk fill technique. Uh, Kerr had come out with a material several years ago called Sonic Fill, and this is sonically activated to actually be able to do a bulk fill technique. In other words, you're filling that cavity from top to bottom, or from bottom to top, I should say, with only one material. And because of the sonic activity, um, it softens that composite and it allows it to adapt and flow into the little areas of the preparation and adapt very nicely. And something new that we also have is a heat activated. And so several composites can be used with heat activation to also do a bulk fill. Usually in my practice, if I'm not using some type of heat activation, I'm usually going with a traditional filling method and that is using a flowable composite as the base and then following up with something like Wago fill at the top. If we're going to be using heat, then we can actually use the Wago fill as a bulk fill and just use that without any flowable composite. If we're going to try to shape these composites, one thing I found uh, that works very well is to use these compo dots. These compo dots allow you to compress and pack the composite and shape the composite very quickly um, without having uh, open areas in the margin. And then from there, taking an anatomical uh, carver um, or composite instrument and shape the composite. Again, within our practices, we want to be not only efficient, but we want to be effective and not having these patients come back with composites that are shaped irregularly or they're breaking down or they have margins that may be open. So here you can see very quickly using this method, we're able to place the Wago fill composites. The Wago fill comes essentially in three shades, A1, A2, and B1. Again, this is a posterior composite because of the zirconia particles. It will look slightly opaque, however, because it is in the posterior portion of the mouth, who really cares? Nobody is really doing what we see um, in the um, journals where they're doing four different layers or colors of composite. I'll do that for a lecture and I'll do that for an article, but within my practice in the real world, I want a composite that I can put in there quickly and efficiently but also have it effective and something that's not gonna wear over time. So once we've done that and shaped it, 
I'll uh, go ahead and adjust the occlusion with a very fine diamond, starting usually with a red and then finishing off with a yellow. And so here we can see the before and after. Once the patient was anesthetized, essentially these restorations were completed in about five to seven minutes. So let's take a look at another class two restoration. I promise not only will I show a bulk fill method as you saw with the two prior restorations, but in this particular case, you can see it was almost like a snake eye composite restoration. Notice this composite was not filled very well. So you can see over several years, it's starting to wear down. Having a zirconium infused composite restoration, we're not gonna see that. And look, this is what the trend is going towards, zirconium restorations. I'd say probably in the last eight years, uh, predominantly, I'd say 85% of my restorations um, now that are indirect are zirconia. And now we're finding that using the Wago fill, we're using zirconia infused composite restorations for our direct fill as well. If we look at the radiograph, we can see that the cavity has passed through the enamel to the next layer of the tooth, which is the dentin. So we're gonna go ahead and prepare this. Again, we're not gonna cross over to the other snake eye. We're gonna try and maintain it here. We've broken the contact. We place our sectional matrix. What I recommend is now take a gold instrument and sort of burnish this to get a nice contact. You see the nice separation of the teeth. You see the wedge that adapts right into that V shape of the, uh, of the ring. And so we'll place our etch and then place our bonding agent of choice. And so in this case, we're gonna use the C method where we're just gonna fill up, get the contact and fill the proximal box and then put another layer of the Wago fill. So there's no flowable in this. This is what it looks like. You can see we've placed that. And then we'll go ahead and use some more of the Wago fill and bulk it up cure this, take our discs and polish. If there's any adjustment necessary in the occlusion, we'll go ahead and do that. And here we see the Wago fill, just one material, all radiopaque, being used for a class two restoration with a nice contact and nice anatomical form. Now compare this with some of these other restorations that were done uh, prior to this patient coming to our office. You can see the two different composite restorations. In this case, you can see they use the same composite restoration here, but they got a lousy contact. So using the Wago tricks and the Wago fill systems, we we're able to get some really nice contours. And I feel confident that that material will last uh, for a very long time because it's infused with the zirconia. Mm -hmm.